With the Seattle expansion on the horizon, I thought what better time to talk about the what ifs, the almost of the NHL. The teams that leave us to wonder how the league would look today with them in it. In this video, I'm going to take a look at the five expansion teams that fell short from becoming official and ultimately taking the ice. And with that, here are the five NHL expansion teams that almost happened. So you probably know that the Cleveland Barons did successfully join the NHL to play roughly two seasons from 1976 to 1978. And without going too far into that mess, Cleveland actually did attempt decades prior to bring an NHL team to the city, well into the original six era that took place from 1942 to 1967, Cleveland almost completely changed the ball game, or puck game I should say, by attempting to join the league mid-era in 1952. During the early 1950s, the AHL's Cleveland Barons had immersed the city in hockey, so much so that Ohio began to consider moving its team up in the ranks to join the top competitors that hockey had to offer. And really, the application process itself went smoothly, but the approval came with a defining catch. The team had to secure funding, as in around a half a million kind of funding. And after they came up short, the morale in Cleveland took a dive for the worse. Following a couple seasons with a losing record and faltering attendance, the team was moved down south and became the Jacksonville Barons. If you're a hockey fan, or even a sports fan for that matter, you're probably familiar with the largest expansion in professional sports history that took place in 1967, and in result, doubled the number of NHL teams and brought hockey to unconventional places like Los Angeles and Oakland, California. But it was during this time the NHL was preparing for the worst. They were conceiving their own backup plan in case the expansion venture wasn't as successful as they'd hoped. And the team that had the most potential at the time to fall through was the conditional franchise St. Louis. As the city had been included large in part due to the insistence from the owners of two teams that would become future rivals, the Chicago Blackhawks and Detroit Red Wings. The other conditional franchise in the league's back pocket was Baltimore. Even though the bid to bring NHL hockey to Maryland was temporarily rejected, their fate really hinged on whether or not St. Louis could get a franchise up and running. But as we all know, the city was successful and so were the other five teams, with the exception of the Seals later on. Even still, after being mentioned yet again as a potential candidate for the 1970 and 72 expansions, Baltimore's fate was eventually sealed, following the arrival of the Washington Capitals in 1974. Try, try, and try again. That's what some have to do to see an expansion through. Okay, enough of that. But with that being said, or wrapped, one word to sum up the NHL's ventures in Seattle would be resiliency. As the Totem's NHL story began in 1974, after Vince Abbey, who was the president of the former World Hockey Association, was awarded an expansion franchise, the Seattle Totems. This move came in the midst of the third expansion since 1967, which would bring two new teams to the forefront, the Kansas City Scouts and the Washington Capitals, and preceding them with almost another as the league even formally announced the fact in June of 1974 that a third team would be taking the ice two years after its predecessors. But due to unforeseen events like the whole WHA folding, the Totems being forced to join the Central Hockey League and Abbey unable to produce the funding needed for an expansion franchise fee, the expansion endeavors were put on the back burner. After Seattle was brought into the conversation countless times, including 1976 as a destination for the Seals, a potential one for the struggling Capitals in 1982, and expansion ventures of 1991, the beautiful city of Seattle is finally getting a team. At least, someone here gets a happy ending, am I right?
Speaking of the early 90s, it was then, just like Seattle, Milwaukee then gained recognition as a potential city that could be suitable for an NHL team. Reason being, well besides the fact that Wisconsin residents already live and breathe hockey, they had a suitable arena, the Bradley Center, which was relatively new at the time, and a thriving IHL team, the Milwaukee Admirals. Therefore, it's pretty fair to say that the city had all the right pieces for a franchise at hockey's highest level except one, a willing owner. And just like that, the ownership group, led by Lloyd Pettit, relinquished their opportunity of expansion and dropped out of the process entirely. Reason being, Pettit believed the expansion draft format would set his team up for potential failure and, end result, would take too much time to really show profit. And possibly the most random site on this list is Hampton Roads, Virginia, which was one of the nine potential candidates for the 1997 expansion. The bid to bring NHL hockey to the southeastern part of the state was largely led by George Shen, who was the owner of the NBA team, the Charlotte Hornets. Shen brought with him a strong vision to bring the metropolitan region its first taste of professional hockey, and divulged plans for a state-of-the-art arena along with a newly constructed team identity, including a name, logo, and mascot, who was actually named Rocky. And I'm not kidding. Despite this, even though it thoroughly had the league impressed, it didn't change the team's location, which was already saturated with surrounding NHL teams. Therefore, in February of 1997, the league shut down Shin's bid, and with it, took away our chances of ever seeing rhinos on NHL jerseys. <laughs> 